Good evening everybody. So we started out with some long time lapses and I wanted to show you what we're building. We're doing the faces for the drawers on the dresser we're working on. The one that I told all you guys was a bench and that was to keep my wife from finding out what it was. So this is what we come up with right here. I know the camera doesn't always do the colors justice but it's spectacular. The uh, So our panels in the drawer faces are black walnut. And of course the outside is black cherry stained with a mahogany stain. And it's actually, like I said, the camera, I'm looking at it in the looking at it in the viewfinder there, and it's not as pretty on the camera, but that uh that cherry's a very it's a deep reddish brown, much deeper than what it shows on there. So if you could see the the light color at the bottom of the black walnut, we left some of the sapwood in there. I don't know if we're going to do that on all of them, but a lot of that depends on the slabs I have that I'm using. So tonight I'm going to show you the process of how this is done. You guys saw quite a bit on the uh, time lapse. So anyway, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. So when we started the video out, we were... Turn the music off here. Bobby Bear. I love Bobby Bear. One of my favorites. So anyway, yesterday or yesterday. Jeez, let's start that over again. So we started out the video breaking down some cherry lumber and I showed you guys the cherry slabs next to the walnut that we're using and uh, so this is what we have. If you guys remember, let me move you guys around see see a little bit better. Now, unless you're into abstract furniture building, chances are that a slab like this right here, a banana log, isn't going to do you a hell of a lot of good thing unless you're doing some wide table tops and some epoxy type stuff something like this you're probably not going to get a lot of use out of unless you get creative in how you cut it up so this right here it's about eight and a half feet long but if we take the curve into it it's quite a bit longer so we have some things that we have to work around this section right here i've got a big crack in the back but I am wide enough at this crack to where I can get my piece, my eight and a quarter inch piece that I need. And it's actually right up here. So we only need, I think it's, uh, how long is the panel? 31 and a quarter, I believe. 31 and a quarter inches long. We have about three usable feet right there. So if we mark that off, and this is where it gets tricky when you're working with this stuff. You have to really plan your cuts out. And I go quite a bit longer than what I need simply because I know my planer is going to leave a couple inches of scalping on each end. 
So this right here isn't quite wide enough for our big drawers, but it is wide enough for our smaller drawers. And the idea here is to get just as much out of this as I possibly, possibly can. So I'm going to go a little narrower on this. And see if I have enough here. And I should have enough there. The only thing that I'm concerned about is when I get down to this point, it is going to leave me a little bit of scalping on the end. And that's kind of a pain. But we can deal with it. We can live with it. And I also have a split down on the other end here. But we can do some creative stuff with that to make it look halfway decent. So, if you're going to do it like I'm doing it, please be careful. Freehanding on a table saw is not the smartest thing in the world to do. And sometimes I just like to do dumb shit to see what happens in the comments sections. I know it's petty and small-minded, but that's just me. Well, let's see, what did I do? I bet you I had it right in my hat the whole damn time. So unfortunately we're going to be planing off quite a bit of this, so I'm not too worried about Let's try it right there. So our finished product needs to be eight and a quarter. And about an inch in, we have eight and a half. Beautiful. Now, some of this walnut, as I found on the first one, we have some bark inclusion from knots. And this is going to be on the back side. Now, I have to make a decision whether I want to do some small epoxy pours or if I want to leave the holes right there. But uh, probably what we're going to end up doing is some epoxy pours on it. But all this crap and shit and gunk. All this is going to have to get cleaned out of here, but probably what I'll do on this particular one is I'll just get this side through the planer to where it's nice and smooth, as few passes as I can. Then I'll probably remove the rest of the material on the back side. Now this is a little bit of a waste. There's going to be some waste because I only need these a half inch thick. But my thing is when I'm milling, I usually... I don't normally have a specific project in mind when I'm milling lumber, unless it's for uh, unless I'm building a structure. When I'm doing something for woodworking, I just mill it to the sizes I would generally use, stick or stack them, and use it down the road. Now, here's something else that I that I do that a lot of people are really frown on. And a lot of times, depending on what it is, I don't always seal up my end grains on boards that I mill. And the reason I do that, when they're in the sticker pile, sometimes I like to see where this thing's going to crack naturally and then use what I have left. Now you do waste a lot of lumber that way, and paint is definitely cheaper than lumber. It all depends on what I'm doing. But uh, a lot of times I don't, sometimes I do. And because uh, what I found a lot of times is I may have saved that thing from checking while it's drying in the pile, but I've noticed as soon as I've cut it, wherever it was going to have a spot it was going to check, it usually ends up checking on me. So I'd rather, personally, I would rather see what I have when I'm pulling it off of the dry pile to start using it. This is actually a pretty nice piece, and I'll have a nice... I use a lot of pieces like that for different stuff. It's kind of a waste not want not type attitude. So I'll cut this as close to that big check as I can. And you notice how nice the rest of this piece is. And that's still going to leave us at the narrow spot, nine and three quarter. All right, let's get her cut. Well, like I said, this is not the brainiest idea to do with a table saw. All I'm going to tell you, if you decide to do this, make sure, make sure you have good, steady hands. If you start doing this with it, that's a recipe for having that thing fly, hit you in the head, hit you in the gut, 
it's very important to follow that line and if you start getting off a little bit very very gently correct it don't be sliding it way back and pulling it in because what happens when you, you have boards that come into contact with the back side of this blade that's when you get your kickbacks and that is it's a dangerous thing it would be much safer to do this with a circular saw and I know you guys are going to blow the comments up on me on here but I've done this since I was a kid I'm not saying nothing bad could happen I'm just letting you know don't don't do some of the stupid shit I do on here. I guess that would be the best thing. So you can end up with a pretty nice edge there. And you look down at when you're freehanding, it's never going to be 100% perfect. But I did pretty decent just about ripping that pencil line in half. The other thing you got to watch is if you got a little bit of wobble, a little bit of twist in your slabs, try to follow that twist. Again, I can't stress it enough, probably not the smartest thing to do with your table saw. So. If I get hurt, guys, that's on me. I don't want to hear about it in the comments section. But, oh my god, you're going to die doing it like that. Don't need it. That's on me if I do. I just don't want somebody else copying me and having something horrible happen. There we go. Now before we go cut our other side, we're going to run that through the joiner and I'll show you why. So when you make your initial cuts, and especially if you're not using the fence or you freehanded it with a circular saw, even if you did use a ripping fence, you still want to run it through a joiner. And 
This is the flattest surface we have in the shop is this table saw. I'm going to run a light behind here. You see we're going to have some high spots. Maybe. Okay, so this one, really hard to see on camera, but down here towards the end, we get off the reservation a little bit. I actually have some light there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. So we want to run this through the joiner just to make sure that we have a perfectly flat edge to ride against that fence for the final cut on the table saw. You get a good edge, you get a good straight edge on your boards, and then you can take it over to your table saw to do your final rip. Now usually, if it was going to be a side, I, I'm not joining it after the, uh, running it through the joiner after the rips, because it's actually going to be ra uh, rabbited. There's going to be a groove or a uh, there's going to be a tongue that's going to go into a rabbit on our rails and styles. The other precaution I could tell you working with black walnut, black walnut's a pretty toxic wood. A lot of tannin in it. And it really can mess with your respiratory system. It's a really good idea. Or a respirator while you're doing it. I should have been wearing one ripping it on the table saw earlier. But me being me. Oh boy, even a little bit of that stuff gets in you and you can really, you can feel it. Kind of burns your throat a little bit. Thank you. 
obnoxious noise, isn't it? That's a little better. <laughs> I manage to make myself look clumsy sometimes. In the simplest of tasks. This is kind of my bastardized version of a of a shaker style cabinet. What I've always liked about shaker style furniture is it's always been a very very simple designs yet real elegant. The shakers definitely didn't believe in fancy for a lot of stuff. Okay. There. Let's get her all nice and pretty for the camera. So that's what she looks like before all the stain and all that good stuff. You know, I didn't know how I was going to like that black cherry against the walnut. But you know, once that stain's applied on the cherry, boy, that is really pretty. And it's going to make for a very dark piece of furniture, but that's okay. We don't mind that. But, um, definitely happy with that. So obviously we have a bunch more of these to make. Well, we have not done this in quite some time. This used to be at the end of every video. We'd sit by the wood stove up here in the shop and do our outro. I've got to get back to that because it was a nice way of communicating with you guys. But uh, as you can tell where we're at, we did a lot of, uh, a lot of rough work today. When you're... When you're doing cabinet work and you're doing it right from the slabs you've milled, it takes a lot longer, obviously. I mean, it's three times longer than going to the lumber store and buying what you want. But the way lumber prices are today, I would not be able to do these projects if I did not have that sawmill. And that's just the bottom line. Honestly, with the house addition coming up, I wouldn't be able to do that without the aid of the sawmill. Because right now, up here... Uh, an eight foot long two by four up here is eight bucks a piece right now, and they're usually shit wood that you're getting from home despot and blows, and it's just, it's horrible. So I'd rather have the quality control in my own hands for that project. But, so obviously what we're trying to do is get this dresser done before I take on another big project, and that's where we're at. Uh, I have a lot of staining to do. I'm not going to do a bunch of that on camera just because there's no big mystery about staining. A lot of you have already seen that before. I'll show a little bit, but not a ton. I don't have any guru advice on that because I'm certainly no guru when it comes to the finish work. I, I'm better at building things, big things like the barn and the house I built and things like that. That's the stuff that I'm decent at. The woodworking stuff, I can do it, but I'm usually feeling my way through it. A lot of times, it's like anything else I do, I'm building stuff out of my head. I don't really have a game plan, just it comes together as it comes together. Initially, the idea behind this dresser was I was going to make all of my door or my drawer faces, I was going to make them all out of solid pieces of cherry, but then I got looking at what I have and wasn't really happy with what I had for that, so it morphed into the shaker style panel. Now there's a little bit of deviation from the shaker style there, but but not much. That's kind of, uh, like I said, that's kind of my twist on it. Something that could become an issue with the width of those drawer faces, it may have been better to put a style right down the middle of each drawer and have two panels instead of one, but we're going to see what it does. If worse comes to worse, I have no problem taking something apart and fixing it to make it better. I kind of was avoiding the look of that, uh, so we'll, we'll just see what happens. I guess as it comes together, and every time we come out here and work on it, it gets a little bit closer, but uh, anyway, I'm rambling again. We always ramble here. We just can't shut our mouths, run the camera, <laughs> and go in. We're just not good at that, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you on the next one.